Well, in 1994, 1995, I began reading that they were going to do a movie. Merchant Ivory was going to be doing a movie about Jefferson called Jefferson in Paris. And there was a lot of consternation on the part of people because they heard that they were going to treat the story as true, the story that Jefferson had a liaison with Sally Hemings that was going to be incorporated into the film. And they were saying things like, there's no evidence that this ever happened, and, you know, Jefferson would never be involved with a slave girl. And I sort of wondered, you know, of all the things that, you know, people may question in history, why was it so important for people to vote, to, you know, to so vociferously deny that this was possible. And if, you, if you're going to, you know, you shouldn't believe this above anything else about American history. And so I sat down to write an op-ed piece that kind of got longer and longer and longer. And then I decided to go ahead and write a book about it, not about whether or not Jefferson and Hemings had children together, but whether or not, but how people wrote about it, how blacks' words are perceived, how blacks are portrayed in the pages of history, because I thought there was a real double standard in um, looking at the evidence for the relationship versus the statements of Jefferson's family, you know, their explanation for why all these kids looked at, like Jefferson. So there, was a, there were issues of race and issues of class that really interested me, and I wanted to try to tease that out more than did, he, did they or didn't they. But it was really about the historiography of the subject. For this particular book, um, Jefferson's papers are being published. All of them aren't published yet. His letters, I mean, there are, you know, thousands and thousands of them. He, uh, his memorandum book, his list, list of all his transactions, that's been published. Um, the farm book has been published as well. That's his record of life, um, plantation life at Monticello. Um, so those things are published. There are unpublished archives. You know, if I go to the, the Jefferson papers, I use some unpublished papers as well. But I looked at archives in, in Virginia, the Virginia Historical Society, the Library of Virginia. I went to England for some of the material about Sally Hemings' father, a couple of London and Lancashire, so all over. Well, when I figured out that I should be paying attention to the names of Sally Hemings' children, um, I was sort of going along and with my first book just sort of writing them down and going through and doing these various things. And then I began to wonder, well, you know, these are actual, I began to see other Randolph people who had the same name. And then I began to think, who are these people? Why are these children named? You know, what does Beverly come from? Or William Beverly was actually Jefferson's oldest son's name. Who is that? That was actually a person. And so, and when I found out who that was, and I found out that he was an associate of Jefferson's father, that they had been on an expedition together, they had carved their initials in a tree together. I, then it just hit me, here's something that's right in front of your face, the names of these children, something that, and in, if they had been married, if Jefferson and Hemings had been married, you would say, oh, of course, look at their children's names. But because they don't have that legal relationship, I was just sort of looking, and I and everybody else, was just sort of looking at this like it was meaningless. And it turns out to be something that's right in front of your nose that's incredibly meaningful. And so then I found out who Thomas Eston was, who Harriet was. We know who James Madison was. Madison Hemings' name was James Madison. And who William Beverly was. So it was like an epiphany uh, to me at that moment, aha moment, where you realize, you know, it, it's, and it's always like that. It's never any some sort of convoluted Rube Goldberg thing. The simplest thing stick with the simple things. What are they named? What are her children's names? And how, what is their relationship to Jefferson? So that was a real aha moment for me. And that's when I really, when I was working on the first book, when I began to get the sense that this is true. Because when I went into it, I really did not know what I was going to find. I was writing about what people had written about the story. And then when I saw that, I was like, oh, that really changed my whole attitude about this. Mm -hmm.